Hey, my name is Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. And what does it mean? It means it's countdown to outbound. Coming into the studio in just a bit, we have got Luigi Sales IQ as one of our down under guests. Hey, there I am. I got my cup of coffee. I hope you. You know what? I know Luigi's sitting right there in the studio. He's ready to go. So let's roll the video. Let's get him in. There we are. Isn't it amazing? We're halfway around the world, and yet we can still say we're in the studio together. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Mark? I'm doing. I'm doing absolutely terrific. I, I I'm doing really good. And hey, um, man, outbound, down under, but more importantly, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. What you got a lot of stuff going on because you got Sales IQ. You were telling me just before we went live, you got some more podcasts happening. What are you seeing happening out there in the sales world? What, what's some nuggets that people can chew on? Oh, I think the nuggets they can chew on is I think the abundance of opportunities that are presenting themselves right now is is better than ever before. I mean, we've just gone through a pretty, you know, um, challenging period of of life. Um, I don't think any of us could have predicted what's, what, what we, we would have experienced the last 12 months. But um, I think we're starting to see a lot of companies really – look at ways in which they can improve and change. And I think um, the other thing that we've seen is companies now are more open to change than ever before. So if we think about selling, selling is all about change, bringing people on a bit of a journey. And I think now is the perfect time to help companies make that change. So, you know, what am I seeing? I'm seeing we, we truly live in a world of abundance. And um, just like we're doing now, Mark, halfway across the world, engaging with each other, um, the geographic limitations are no more. So, you know, it's all about the mindset. It's all about, you know, getting out there, prospecting, outbound, making it happen. Well, I'll tell you what, there is so much that you said there. And, and, and I give you a big shout out because Australia is what, 34 million people or something like that? Is that, is that about oh, right? Yeah, it's 25, 20, oh, we're smaller oh, than oh, California. Yeah, sorry, I was throwing in an extra five or 10 million. Yeah. So it's, it's 25 million people. So you guys mm -hmm. have learned how to be in this digital internet global space for a long time because your your audience reaches Europe, reaches Asia, reaches yeah. North America. I mean, you truly learned how to play global. I think long before those of us here in the US learned to play global. Uh, yeah, we've been pretty fortunate. We've had a few really great, you know, companies that have that have done some great things in the US market and um, in other markets as well. I think for such a, in comparison to the US, you know, two, two three of your states are bigger than our country. Um, they, they have more GDP than our country, you know, like California's almost 40% more than our, our country from a GDP perspective. But, you know, we go well as a, as, a, as, a, um, as a country from business perspective. They perform quite well. Well, you, you know what I find very interesting is I, I think because you play in Australia and you've had to reach out, you've really learned how to listen to customers much better than I think people in North America. And, and you said mm -hmm. something, the, the whole change thing, everybody's open to change. There is, there is such an abundance of opportunities right now. Every guest mm -hmm. I've had on, on Countdown to Outbound has been talking about the abundance of opportunities out there. I mean, mm -hmm. it is mind blowing what's happening out there in the marketplace. It's, it's a race to try to keep up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, one of the things that our great friend Anthony Noreno talks about is, you know, the sales process is littered with the requirement of commitments. You know, close doesn't happen at the end. It's a there's commitments from the start to the finish. And one of the key commitments that our, our prospects and buyers need to make is that commitment to change. Right. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most important level of commitment they need to make. And I think, again, pre pre this whole pandemic, companies would oft, of often use change as the reason why they can't move forward, right? Because it's too difficult to make that change. But now because they've had to adapt so quickly, change is not something that, you know, isn't a priority. It's just going to be something they've got to continue to do to continue to evolve. Yeah. There's two things that you said there, you know, in terms of change, they're almost, they have to change. Companies have to mm -hmm. change because the world changed around them. So they got to change. Yeah. But you also said something, and Anthony talked about this, you're right, that it's it's a series of commitments. 
it com mm. commitments. But what I find happening so often when business gets good and people are playing this rain barrel mentality, you know, where yeah. it's just, uh, you know, it's just coming into the rain barrel. They forget about the requirement of commitments. They, re mm. they, they forget about those steps because they're too busy chasing this oh, squirrel, 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 squirrel. Mm. And they forget the basics. And I find yeah. it's it damages salespeople's skill set. They may be making numbers, but boy, they're really doing it pretty sloppily. And I don't know if you see that. I don't know if you're sensing that. Um, yeah, I think, you know, especially like we live in a world where, and, and this is what I love about the outbound, you know, having traveled halfway across the world to be at outbound in person a few years back, um, you know, we live in a world where a lot of companies think we don't need to outbound anymore. We can just do inbound, flood our pipeline with marketing qualified leads and everything will be, be rosy, right? But the reality is a lot of those people that come into that pipeline, they don't even answer the phone. Um, and, you know, that, that, <laughs> those leads are just marketing qualified leads. It doesn't mean that they're the right type of people for us and it can present a whole lot of challenges. And, and what happens is I find that a lot of salespeople get stuck in dealing with junk versus having great conversations with the right buyers and creating opportunities versus waiting for opportunities to come to them. So spot on because the pipeline becomes a sewer line. Because it's mm. just <laughs> it's just gunked up with stuff. But you're mm. right, because so many people are are seeing all this inbound stuff. And so many inbound, so many times inbound stuff is just names. It's just mm. names. You still have to go through the effort to really qualify them. And even if somebody says, This is what drives me nuts, people sit there and say, Well, I I'm 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 you know, what's your price on this? What's your price on that? And they go, Hold on, hold on. Because just because they're asking for a price doesn't mean chances are they're looking for a price to use against you at a later point mm -hmm. in time. You've got yeah, to absolutely. be absolutely careful. So yeah, it is. I mean, now how um, if 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 you were telling somebody new, and I've never asked this question to anybody on Countdown Outbound, but we've got a lot of students graduating, kind of looking to come into you know, yeah, the business world, and a lot of people coming into sales. What would be some advice that you would tell? that new scene that new that newly graduated college person coming in yeah, the sales workforce. what would you tell them i think that the first piece of advice i tell them is you know go back and focus on the mindset piece is really understand the mindset a sales professional of a sales professional and what that mindset is all about and if you think about look at some of these old books from og mandino um and you know how to influence friends and influence people. Um, that talks about the basic fundamentals of building relationships with people, which is so so important. I think we kind of forget that relationships are still the foundation of sales success. And with all automation platforms and you know sequencing platforms, we kind of forget that you know what we have to have a human connection. We've got to have a relationship because at some point we need to be creating value, and we can't create value if we don't earn the right to understand a bit more about that organization and about that client's needs and outcomes and the impact that outcomes going to help them achieve. And again, we throw, you know, especially this whole era of tech and it's a really funky place to work in and putting in a graduate in an SDR role and saying, go out there, make calls, talk to C-level executives. You're 24 years old. You're 25 years old. We're going to do a two week boot camp, and you need to book meetings. Um, you know, Where's the where's the learning about like your tone, your pitch, um, your mindset, the questioning, open, closed, like all that basic stuff that I took for granted growing up. Um, dealing with rejection. How do you deal with rejection, right? How do you deal with it, like a person oh, that hangs up on you, right? Man, you uh, are you are speaking my language because <laughs> sometimes they think because they have all these tools, they have all these software tools and all, you know, they got they got this unbelievable sales stack that things just happen for them. Mm -hmm. And no, sales is not transactional. It's sales is relational. And you have to be able to create that relationship. And and I think that's what is lacking with so many salespeople, especially right now with business picking up the way it is. People mm -hmm. just think they can race from, and they forget the relationship. You know, a line I love to say is, the only good sale is one that leads to the next sale. Yeah. 
Because that's, what does that tell you? That that says yeah. you've done something right. That, that that means you've treated the customer right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I know what and I would. Yeah, yeah, jump in. Go yeah, on. so I was just going to say, and there's studies that show that, you know, Bain & Co. did an incredible study on customer advocacy. And the advocacy, when, when customers have a high level of advocacy, it leads to more profit because you get more referrals. And as we know, referrals convert at a much higher rate than any other lead source. But yet we fail to try to get more referrals from our customers, right? Which um, blows my mind yeah. away. But it's so true. We're just yeah. on. And, and you know what's funny is it the metrics of how many salespeople are rewarded really do mm. not reward for referrals. They re yeah. reward for, for the new one, especially at that SDR level. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and I think that's another thing, you know, for, for somebody coming into the industry and profession, um, I think, again, one of the things that we take for granted today, we've got LinkedIn, Sales Navigator, we've got all these great tools that help us understand more about our buyers. But one of the best skills that one could learn is the research phase of the sales process. So when I started, and I'm not that old, I'm 39, I just turned 39, but um, when I started, we didn't have LinkedIn we'd have to actually go out there and do proper research. We'd have to drive through the streets to look for companies and then go, yeah, they, they look like a good prospect. And then we'd have to go and do a bit of research. And then, like, I think that element of research and that curiosity and looking under a rock and seeing what's underneath there, and that's missing today because we've got a click of a button and we can pull that research. And it's it's preventing us from actually being curious as salespeople because that is a, one of the most key parts of the sales process is our ability to be curious, want to learn more because it allows us to really see the bigger picture. Um, yeah. So for any new person coming in, that's that's one of the key things that I I would you know impart on them is go back to the basics, forget the sequencing tools, forget forget the tech stack, and actually learn the art of sale of selling. Yeah, I, I got two two comments. I remember the days of, of three doors left, three doors right. You know, you have an appointment with this door. Yes. And you go three doors left and three doors right. <laughs> Don't come back to the office until you've hit all six of those other doors. Yeah. And then and then I remember, you know, I, I worked in a, I worked in an organization where the, the the only tool the SDR had, and boy, we were excited when the new yellow pages came in for different cities <laughs> around the country, you know, it's like, wow, we yeah. just got the Orlando yellow pages. We just got the, you know, the, the, yeah. the Philadelphia yellow pages. Wow. We can go to town now. Isn't mm. this great? Mm. And it's like, wow. But it really forced us to get yeah. on the phone and to listen. You know, people say, Oh, it's so hard to sell today. Oh man. Let me tell you something. When all you got is the yellow pages, you, you really learn real quick. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 I, I, I think, you know, I think we're, we're fortunate. I remember when LinkedIn first came out, I was one of the early users of the platform because it gave me a name and I didn't have to ring up and say, oh, can I speak to the person responsible for A, B or C? Um, you've actually got a name, right? So uh, I think, again, look, I think we're, we, we are um, lucky today that we have these tools but also a little bit unlucky because it's not allowing people that are coming into the profession the opportunity to really learn, you know, the art of selling. And I think um, that's something that hasn't changed. Yes, the way in which we interact with our buyers might have changed, but fundamentally the art of sales is still the way it was from 100 years ago, right? If there's no relationship, if we haven't earned the right to understand a bit more about our prospects and our buyers, then we're not going to learn about how we can help them achieve a better outcome. Yes. And if we don't know that, then there's no exchange of value. Yeah. A sales strategy on LinkedIn that does not work is click and pitch, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how many times has somebody connected with you and then two <laughs> seconds later, they're pitching you? It's like, yeah. excuse me, what part of social media did you not understand? <laughs> the media or the social? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But it it it, it is funny because it has made the marketplace a very noisy marketplace, mm. very noisy. I mean, you know, when we first went into the pandemic, I was amazed at how the internet just, I mean, I thought the internet was on fire beforehand, but man, it just <laughs> lit up, right? I mean, yeah. because the traditional way that I think a lot of companies were doing lead, you know, gathering prospects was going to trade shows. Trade shows yeah. are gone. Trade shows disappeared. And suddenly all this marketing money, which had been going for trade shows, suddenly had to go someplace else. 
Mm-hmm. And boy, it created a strange set of dynamics that I think are still playing are still playing out there. So what, yeah. what would you tell somebody right now? Because again, outbound, if you're not, if people are watching this, they're not familiar with outbound, what is outbound? Focuses in on three things, prospecting, pipeline, and productivity. It is without yeah. a, you, you traveled halfway around the world two years ago. So you saw that 33 meters of video screen across yeah. the front stage, 33 meters. That's 110 feet. Let me tell you something. It, it, it's a rock show, isn't it? Mate, it's, it, for me, it was the best experience of my sales career. And I've, I'm, I'm pretty proud to say that I've been a high-performing sales professional the majority of my career, hitting some, you know, always exceeding my sales targets. But something Mike Weinberg said at that last conference just continued to, to resonate and stay with me, which is it's not about being an order taker. It's about being an order maker. It's about being that proactive sales professional that can make it rain. And yeah. I think if we... You know, we really think about the premise of selling. I shouldn't have to wait for marketing to deliver me a conversation with a potential buyer, with a suspect, as you call it, a suspect mark, right? Is I should have the skills and the ability to create my own pipeline. Yeah. And when we are able to do that, doesn't matter how much technology comes in, I'm always going to be a valuable salesperson in the marketplace. And that's what it's all that that's what outbound mm. is. Like you said, I mean, you, and you come and it is it is mind blowing the experience. And of course, this year is so great because not only will we have about 700 people live on site in Atlanta, but we'll have a worldwide streaming audience. And yeah. then what's really cool and we get done in Atlanta, we kind of get to come down to Melbourne for yeah. outbound down under where it shall start yeah. at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Australia time. Now, Susan, we're going to exclude Perth, okay? You're, you're, it's going to be 7 a.m. for you in Perth. But <laughs> yes. for everybody else, it's going to, it's going to be 10 a.m. <laughs> and, hey, it's going to be a great opportunity for the Australian sales community and everybody else worldwide because I'll tell you what, the five of you absolutely crush it from a sales perspective. Hey, we got to wrap this thing up here in a bit, but I bet you've got a secret code uh, so people can save some money when they buy either the virtual ticket or the yeah. in-person ticket. What What's that code? Luigi 100. Why don't you spell Luigi? L-U-I-G-I. There you go. So there should okay. only be. There's not many Luigis out there. So, I, I, you, uh, know, you know, it's going to say, <laughs> this is, hey, you know, you're not going to forget his name walking the streets of Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. I think is an absolutely unbelievably amazing city. I love Melbourne. Anyway, so, hey, it, it is outbound, and it's June 15th through the 18th for the live piece, which is when um, – down under takes place because down under takes place actually on the 17th and the 18th correct yeah i correct. i i, I got i got to jump forward today i got to jump forward yeah. today because it'll be the 16th and the 17th for us in the states but 17th and 18th for you guys and really really special and hey really grab that when you get that virtual ticket you get access to so many other pieces that are happening in the program so hey we gotta run but stick around for the after the show show. Would you do that? Absolutely, Mark. We, we, will, we will go ahead and run the video here and uh, we'll be right back. That's a short video. See? Glad you didn't run away. There you go. Hey. Hey, what, what, is, what is your website? So www.salesiqglobal.com. Salesiqglobal.com. Um, cool. Yeah, it's, Love it. it's where my my colleague Tony Hughes, um, who's also at Outbound, um, has some content. Um, our, our friend James Muir is coming into the you know putting his content up there soon. So yeah, it's it's, in, it's it's a library of content for sales professionals to be the best they can be. Yeah, and Tony, I believe uh, Tony is my guest tomorrow. So yeah. yeah, so he 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 will be on tomorrow, and then we round out the week with uh, uh, Cadam. Uh, let's see, is that let's see? Yeah, I got yes. stop. I got I got so many things going. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> hey, uh, so anyway, how you guys came through the pandemic, and you guys continue to grow as a business. It really is cool. It really is cool yes. to see what you're doing. And I love how you're partnering with Tony. And I didn't realize James Muir is teaming up with you. You've done some stuff with uh, Daryl Prale over yes. at uh, yeah. Vanilla Soft. Uh, yeah. They happen to be the title sponsor of Outbound. And and Daryl, is he a little bit hyper? 
<laughs> yeah, I think I think he's, he's he's calmed down a bit since he's grown the beard. You know, I've really I've really admired um, the way he's made that transition from no beard to beard, and uh, you know he's <laughs> he's moved into the CRO CRO role. So for those that don't know, he went from marketing to sales. So he's actually made a bit of a big transition, um, and they're doing amazing amazing things at Vanilla Soft. Yeah, he is. I mean, it's it's a great great company. So, hey, what what's kind of the big stuff you're working on for the rest of uh, 2021? Yeah, so for the rest of 2021, it's all about um, continuing to build our, our content. Um, we've got incredible programs that allow sellers to really understand the premise of prospecting and, and creating more net new opportunities with their target buyers. We're rounding that out with, um, we've just released a you know LinkedIn social selling program um, on how to leverage a LinkedIn and sales navigator platform to generate more conversations. Um, and again, I say that generate more conversations because the sale doesn't occur on LinkedIn, especially when you're selling, you know, something that has a level of complexity, you need to have a conversation with someone. So yeah. it's about generating more conversations, getting more intel. And then we've got the perfect close, which is James Muir's, uh, James Muir. For anyone that, and I, I had the, pr- the privilege of seeing James in action at Outbound in 2020, in 2019. And wow, he is, uh, an incredible operator when it comes to closing um, and his techniques I use all the time to help me yeah. get deals to that yeah. point of decision. Yeah. In fact, James will be on, on countdown to outbound next week. So yeah, oh, it really is. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And he brings, he brings content. So anyway, yeah, he's hey, very good. Um, we are out of time here, but great catching up with you. Really. Mark, always a pleasure. Thank and, you for having me on your show. Yeah. Thank you. And um, Hey, we're going to have fun countdown to outbound which yep. follows um, Sales After Dark with Victor Antonio, which follows Outbound in Atlanta. So, <laughs> man, it's going to be, it's going to be, there's going to be no sleep for about three or four days there. But, hey, what's that, right? <laughs> we're, we're going to be jazzed. So, hey, thanks so much. And I'm going to put your graphic back up because I've been talking with Luigi, Sa- uh, salesiqglobal.com. I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. Thank you much. Catch you on the next Countdown to Outbound.